Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So we're going to bring you a couple of things today. Yeah. We're going to bring you <laughs> 10 things we think every new RVer <laughs> should know before they hit the road. I haven't finished my first cup yet. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to do it in a day in the life of an RVer. Yeah, we've got a lot of questions about or asking us, what do you guys do every day? Well, I can guarantee you, you're going to see us sitting in front of our computers working on stuff for you, talking to you guys. Yeah, we we like to get caught up first thing in the morning on comments, questions, emails, all the social media. We try to knock that out in the first couple hours of the day. It doesn't always work out that way, but that's what we try to do. That's where we start. Coffee and comments. The first thing we want to talk about that all newbie RVers should know, which is... You don't have to buy everything that you see on a YouTube channel telling you what you need. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. We made that mistake when we first started. There are a few things that we spent money on that we ended up getting rid of because we didn't need it. The big thing is everybody RVs a little differently and their rigs are different. So right. your needs are going to be different than our needs. Exactly. And that's the thing we didn't see. We saw all the cool things and we said, well, if they're using it, we must need it. Yeah. So we bought it. Mm, not so much. Not so much. There are only two things that we think every RVer should have, must have, and it's all safety and maintenance um, items. And the first one is a water pressure regulator. So that's going to make sure that the water doesn't come into your rig too fast and too furious and bust your <laughs> water lines. Right. So the park that we came into yesterday in their, um, I guess, rules and regulations or policies it states right in there that they have high pr water pressure and that you need to set it at or whatever it is for your rig or double check your rig. So it's always, you, you need to be mindful of that every single time you pull in. Yep. And the other thing is a surge protector. <laughs> that is a must. That thing has saved our tail more times than we can count. Uh, and it's the best peace of mind. And you can have the surge protector that plugs straight into the pedestal or one that you mount inside your RV as well. Yep. But either way, it's a good investment. So really, everything else is just a bonus that makes your life easier. And, you know, we all love our technology and our gadgets. <laughs> That's but, right. But if you need to get on the road today and you're trying to get on the road with the least amount of money, start there. Um, that's our first tip of the day and we're just going to start our day. And as you can see, we <laughs> just rolled out of bed. Well, sort of. I did put my hair up for you. I didn't want to totally scare you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we'll, we'll chat with you throughout the day. Yep. More coffee and comments. A lot more coffee. I got three miles in today. I didn't run. I did walk. I watched her do three miles. Yeah, well, we won't talk about that. But now the goal is to get our Wii Boost on the roof and get a little bit of a better Wi-Fi signal. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're sitting right next to the park Wi-Fi tower and even it is really, really bad. Phil is still not allowed on the roof because of his elbow. So I guess it's up to me to put the Wii Boost on. For the next tip, I'm going to recommend you become a handyman. So even if you didn't really do anything in your sticks and bricks, you always called somebody to come do some repair work. Now's the time to learn to do some of these things yourself. And really, a lot of it is really simple. You can learn from your neighbor. You can learn from YouTube. You can go into manuals online and read about it that way. We've done all kind of stuff in our rig. One of the main reasons, other than saving money, that this is good is because when you live in your RV, you don't want to go drop it off somewhere for days at a time to have them fix, you know, repair that could take you 15 minutes to an hour to do yourself. So definitely, definitely don't be surprised at how much you can do in your own RV. Let's talk about doing a shakedown cruise. A shakedown cruise is where you take your RV out, probably less than 50 miles from home, take it to uh, a park, learn how it operates, learn what you need to put in it, what you need to bring with you. You know, if you're not comfortable taking it out, go to an RV park somewhere, pull into a spot and practice hooking up your water hose, the electric. Or if you want to figure out what it's like to boondock and you don't know how to boondock, well then go to an RV park and don't hook anything up. You know, fill up your fresh water tank and see how long you can go before you run out of fresh water. And if you run out of fresh water in two days while well, you're at the park, just hook up your hose. But it's a, it's a great place to learn how your rig operates, how you're going to live in it or how you want to live in it. 
you know, there's just so much to learn from doing a shakedown cruise. We took three of them before we hit the road uh, because we'd never done it before. We jumped in with both feet. And what better way to do it than take it out and see what works, what doesn't work, what you need to bring with you. We've got to go finish some paperwork at the uh, check-in office at the, our new uh, campground. So they called us and said, hey, come over here and pick up your paperwork. They're working on the... Um, we're here in the office, but the door is locked. So if you, if we need you, we'll call you. And if you need us, call them. Um, so I, I mean, we get it. It's working for them. Um, and like we said, uh, I think yesterday, they're only letting um, full timers in. Not anybody here for recreation here to play. We did say it yesterday, but you won't see that video until after this video. So he's talking oh. about our. Um, uh, the video we did where we did our breakdown and our setup. So you can also download a checklist from that video, which takes us to this tip. <laughs> which tip is that, dear? Always use a checklist when you're breaking down and setting up. That's right. Uh, and it never fails while you're in the middle of either setting up or breaking down. Somebody wants to come and talk to you, which is fine. I mean, our beers were friendly. That's what we do. However, if you get interrupted, stop and start over and just make sure you don't miss a step or that you bypass something because inevitably, <laughs> something, inevitably. And something gets skipped and you may forget to put in your pin on your toe dolly. I know. That might have happened. Yeah, that was a bad day for us. Um, so you just, our recommendation is follow your checklist and if you get interrupted, go back to number one and start it again. And you'll be good to go. And that's not a newbie thing. That is an RVer thing. Even RVers who've been doing it forever still use their checklist. Yeah. Are you ready for our next tip? Tip away. This is a big one. <laughs> this is an important one. It's all about communication. Huge. Surviving two people living in such a small space, you have to have good communication. Yeah. Yelling is a form of communication, <laughs> no. right? No. Not oh, a good maybe, form. Maybe not. <laughs> so definitely you cannot try to sweep things under the rug. If something is bothering you, you're going to have to deal with it because it can yeah. make things very uncomfortable in that tiny little space. There's nowhere to go and hide. Yeah. And, you know, traditionally Stacy would go and slam a door for effect. <laughs> However, our bedroom door, it's a sliding door. So it's not the same effect. <laughs> no, it doesn't really give me that same. Mm. <laughs> If something's bothering you, make sure you talk about it before it gets out of hand and you really lose your mind. Yeah, and you've got to you've got to do it right then and there. You know, for sure. You know, don't don't wait. And then I mean, because if you let it wait, then obviously the tension's just going to get thicker, um, and you're sitting in the same room staring at each other. <laughs> so that definitely doesn't help. So you you and not that we've we've had a few in the beginning. Um, mainly because of me, but always because of him. Um, <laughs> but again, you know, we're obviously still together and still smiling. Um, she hasn't taken me out yet, <laughs> um, but we we always do manage to you know find that happy medium and and get it yeah. taken care of and and we move on. So hopefully the person, if you're going in with somebody, you could be a solo. But if you're going to be traveling with someone, hopefully you like them a whole lot. <laughs> Love may not be enough. You have to like them and like spending time with them because you're going to be spending all of your time with them. Yeah, it went. we went from uh, me always being gone um, to all of a sudden always home. Uh, and it was a huge adjustment for, yeah. for Stacy. Yeah. Uh, me, I loved it because I was the one that was always gone. So I loved being back. Stacy, in the beginning, she was like, don't you have somewhere to go? <laughs> have something to do? Don't you need to get underway? Don't you have duty? <laughs> something? I need a break. But we we're recouping all that lost time as well. So it's it's great that we can't communicate with each other. Yep. Um, and you know this this lifestyle is just just what we needed at this point. Exactly. So make sure you deal with whatever issues come up as they come up. If you have to be at a private campground, this is one of our favorites to be at. Yeah, and it has a pool. Although we don't normally look for a pool, this is just an extra benny. Considering how long we're probably going to be stuck here, I might actually make it down and test this pool out. Oh, I'm definitely going to be down here testing out the hot tub. I'm going to throw together a marinade for dinner tonight. I am actually making a salad. It's a chicken caprese salad. And I've made it one time before in, um, and put it in a video. So if you're interested in the salad, I'll put the link below. It has the recipe and all that in it. Um, it's really good. 
All right, my chicken is all ready for the grill. This is going to be yummy. So I think now's a good time to give you another tip. What do you think? I think so, because that chicken's calling my name, so we gotta hurry up and get it on the grill. <laughs> all right, which one? Um, let's talk about the perfect RV. Now, a lot of people think you cannot find the perfect ID RV your first time up, and we are here to tell you, oh yes, you can. Yeah, you can. Uh, we found the perfect one after doing a ton of research. Um, we knew what we were looking for, what we thought would work for us, um, and then, you know, how we wanted to travel. Bingo. We nailed it. So a couple of things to think about is what do you plan on doing on the road? Do you have hobbies? Are you a photographer and have a ton of uh, photography equipment? How much space do you need for that stuff? Are you bringing a sewing machine? So those are, are you working? Do you need a, an right. office? So those are all things to think about and plan for that space when you walk into your RV. So those are some of the ways to find out if that rig's going to work for you. Another thing is weights. You need to know how much weight you can put into the RV. Yeah, your cargo carrying capacity. Yes. So yes. if you have a lot of equipment you want to take with you, but your rig only allows for 500 pounds from the time you drive it off the lot, you can put 500 pounds in them. There are some seas out there, you know, that are pretty low. Once you put in your water and your your two, you know, you know a couple hundred pound people, that's it. You're not going to have a lot of weight allowance for equipment. So those are all things, some things to consider when you're looking for your RV. Yeah. So don't get caught up on your floor plan and ooh, the oohs and ahs of the bells and whistles on the inside. You got to look at the, the weight, the cargo carrying capacity. And if you're going to tow something, you got to know what you yeah. can tow. Yeah. Um, so put those on your list of, of things that you need to look at when you're trying to find that rig. And you're going to hear, oh, you, you're not going to find your perfect rig the first time. You, you're, you'll you probably find it the third or fourth rig when you figure it out. You don't have to if you do your homework up front. Right. We're not saying that, you know, everybody can find their first rig um, the first time out, but I think if you do the proper plan and you just might be able to. We're, I'm a little stubborn, this, you know, whatever I knew, whatever we purchased, we're sticking with because I'm not flipping over the money. Right. Uh, you know, these are huge um, depreciation factor with RVs, we all know that. So money is big when you flip an RV. So for us, we tried our very best to find what would fit our needs and also a floor plan we could be happy with at the same time. Right. So, uh, you know, when you're looking, make your list of all the things that you are going to need to live in it and all the things that, that Stacy just described. So yeah. put it put it on paper that these are the things you need to have and then things you need to look at. So when you're out and then the salesperson approaches you, you can say, this is what I'm looking for. And don't let them sway you and tell them, tell you, you don't need that or you, you won't use that. Yeah. They don't know you. You know you. So stick to your guns when you go out there yep. and it's possible it definitely is possible I just don't want people to give it into their minds because so many people say this isn't your last RV it's your first RV so get it in your mind it might be your last RV I'm telling you we will be driving Ruby into the <laughs> ground that's right the chicken's going it won't take very long for that to cook and then i'm going to throw the asparagus on the grill and then we will put it all together in a salad so it's going to be delicious in the meantime we can hang outside in the 95 degree weather or we can go back in the ac <laughs> but i'm cooking i have to stick around we can give another tip tip away all right this is a very important tip <laughs> we actually did this so we are speaking from experience yeah we got caught up in the hype do not fall into vacation mode. Boy, did we ever. It is easy to do. You feel like when you go somewhere, you have to do everything, see everything there is to see, and it is exhausting. It is, not to mention we had to eat and taste everybody's <laughs> best cooking. Best cookies, best margaritas, best you name it. Phil still we might tried. do that. Well, maybe, we just won't call it vacation mode. <laughs> it is very expensive and very exhausting that's really how people wipe themselves out and burn out so remember when you go to a location you don't necessarily have to do it all no and we kept we kept telling ourselves even in the middle of it we're living this is our house we don't have to go 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 24 7 treat it like we were back at home living in a sticks and bricks and then after 
I don't know, six months of saying that, we finally slowed down. <laughs> we finally got it. <laughs> so now we go to a place we don't worry about having downtime in the morning or in the evening. If we need to do laundry, if we want to, you know, just chill one day and not go anywhere. All of that is okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a tough trap to fall into. Um, not to mention all your relatives and friends that you haven't seen forever want you to come see them. Yeah, so yeah. that just plays into got to go, got to go, got to go. Yeah. Another tip is knowing your RV dimensions. Whether you have a class A, travel trailer, fifth wheel, you have to know how tall you are, how long you are, and how wide you are, and even how much you weigh. Going down interstates and old country roads, you're going to run into low, over, low overpasses, low overhangs. Uh, you're going to have uh, weight-bearing bridges, one-way tunnels. Uh, so you need to know how tall you are going down the road so that when you do encounter a low bridge, you'll know if you'll fit or not. You don't want to be that guy or gal that shaves off all of their AC and, and vent covers on their RV because you didn't know how tall you were. It also helps when you're going into um, certain parking lots, there's weight limits there. Uh, some of them even have bars like going into a shopping center or a mall parking lot. They have bars over those entrances because they don't want big rigs or big trucks coming in. So. If you have an RV GPS, you can put all of your RV dimensions in that and that'll help you as you're going down the road and it'll give you timely alerts and warnings so that you don't make that mistake and go down a road that has a weight bearing bridge or a low overhang um, overpass. In addition to knowing all of those dimensions, it's a good practice in the beginning to write them down on a sticky note or something and keep them um, in the driver's um, area, whether it's in a truck if you're pulling a trailer or a fifth wheel, or if it's in your class A. Put it on the dash or something so that you have a visual right there 24-7 while you're driving so that you know if you see a 13-8 height bridge and you can quick glance down to know that you're only 12 feet 8 inches tall, you're good to go. It's peace of mind right there. And Stacy made her world famous <laughs> caprese chicken salad. I said world famous because this is really good. The chicken uh, and how she marinates it, really, really good. And of course you saw we cooked it on the grill, but it's not complete until you add this balsamic glaze to it. Mm -hmm. This puts it over the top. Yeah, it's, this is really good. We actually were, was, we were given this actual bottle by friends we met in New Jersey. We were, we boondocked with them for a few days back um, before the summer. Mm -hmm. Man, we are so grateful that they introduced us to this. So it's delicious. This, this is the only way Stacy gets me to eat a salad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very true. All right, you want to do one more tip? Okay, let's do a tip. Mm. Got a mouthful. I think a really good thing people need to know before they hit the road is you need a maintenance fund. Oh, absolutely. That is a great tip. Our broken fund a repair fund, emergency fund, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, what, yeah, whatever you name it, put money aside and put a lot in it. Because um, you never know when Murphy's going to jump out and bite you, yeah. for sure. These rigs break all the time. And of course, if you have a more expensive rig with more electronics and motherboards and circuit boards or whatever, <laughs> you're going to need a larger fund than somebody with a small, you know, 20 foot travel trailer. Yeah, so, exactly. So just keep that in mind because I'm telling you, when that the first time something breaks and you have to fork over some money, it's, it's a little painful. It is. And you, we know just out of the gates for tires on our rig specifically, we're looking at between four dollars and $5,000 on the low end. Yeah. But we have been to Tip and Service Center twice and we've done repairs. Um, and I'll link those videos below as to exactly what we paid for repairs and um, service and service. Yeah. yeah, so I'll link those videos below. We actually went there twice and we had work done at um, Bay on the Diesel. chassis. Bay Diesel. Yeah. Yep. So we'll put all those prices down below if you're wondering what it costs for a motorhome. Yeah, don't do not jump into this lifestyle without some kind of reserve cash set aside somewhere yeah. just for that emergency. Most people by and large have that even in their sticks and bricks you you know ac's break water heaters yeah, break yeah. it's the same thing in an rv you need to have that fun set aside yeah so all right we're digging in
We started our day with coffee. We thought we would end our day with you with a cocktail. And this is, this is by far my favorite drink. I think a bug just landed in my drink. Oh, it did. Are you kidding me? I got him. He's out. Okay, now it's by far my favorite drink. <laughs> <laughs> We're not wasting it. No. There's enough lime in there. That's it's right. going to kill the germs. Dang, that. <laughs> so this is my Mexican martini, which I don't make very often, but let me tell you, they do. Mm, they're very yeah, delicious. These, these things, they put you right on a level playing field right there. <laughs> I, should, I should do a blog post. Okay, so I'm going to do a blog post with the recipe. So, yeah. man, you guys got to try them. They are delicious. Yeah, these, these are really good. And it's good sipping, nice and cold. They're, they're not really sweet. I don't do a mix, so they're not sweet. They're kind of tart. So if you're a very sweet drinker, you probably won't like it. Right, right. But okay. none the same. It's still pretty good. Yeah, it's our favorite. All right, so we're going to finish up with one more tip. And that tip is expect a roller coaster ride of emotions. <laughs> Absolutely. An ebb and flow, if you will. Yeah, especially the first six months to even out to a year. Yeah. And, you know, you go from the excitement of doing the research and, and finding that rig that's perfect for you um, to getting it and feeling even more excited. Yeah. And then you get in it and you're like, uh oh. What did what, we what do? Did we do? <laughs> what did we do? How, how, how did we get here? And we still have a house and we still have... And what do we, we do now? Yeah, you just, it's yeah. like Stacy said, it is a roller coaster for sure. So expect it. It's a huge life change if you're going full time. If yeah. you're a part timer, well, you have the best of both worlds. So you have a fallback plan to go back to. So the emotions won't be as strong for you. Right. Although don't be surprised if you do have some because going into new environments and going into strange places can be unnerving for some people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just driving this thing. I mean, yeah. I was a nervous wreck the first time I drove it. I was a nervous wreck yesterday. But it's, you know, you you don't know what you don't know. So you get in and yeah. you do what you can to to get those emotions under control. And, you know, all the while not trying to lose it. <laughs> yeah, most importantly. Yeah. So yeah. just don't be surprised. Have patience with yourself. Have patience with who you're traveling with. Expect to be you know, scared and anxious and even don't be surprised if you have a little bit of depression thinking of, you know, regret right. and what did I do? It is all totally normal. So if you can survive through this first six months <laughs> to the year, you're golden. It's going to be smooth selling from there. Yeah. And it, it took us probably about six months where we felt comfortable with what we were doing. And that is soup to nuts, driving it, setting yeah. it up, breaking it down. We, we got into a rhythm um, well, although we were traveling a little too fast, but we got into a rhythm yeah. of how things were going to go. And that kind of, you know, put us on an even keel, if you will. Yep. All right. I have one more bonus tip. Oh, this is a bonus. bonus. You get 11. Okay. Let me sip on that. Okay. <laughs> and that is, if you need help, don't be afraid to ask your neighbor. Absolutely. I'm telling you, the RV community is by far above what we thought it would be. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean... Case in point, we got stuck in an RV um, campground. The back wheels just sunk down in the in the, the grass site yes. that we were in. We didn't ask a single person to help us, yet they flocked to us. Um, no mm -hmm. questions asked. We're breaking out blocks, breaking out boards, you name it. They were spot on. So ask and you shall receive. Yeah. I mean, when you least expect it, you turn around, there's somebody there that can offer yeah. some kind of help. Um, and don't be bashful. Ask. Yes, because people want to share. They want to help you. So go to your neighbor. Go to somebody standing outside if you have a question with anything. Yeah. I'm telling you, they are more than happy to give and help you. Yeah, don't don't panic. If Especially if you're in an RV park, don't panic. There's somebody in this park that will either <laughs> know how to do it, yep. know somebody that can do it, or point you to a place out in town that can get you back on the road. Yep. We are really excited that you guys are here and you've been hanging out with us all day. I told you we were going to be boring. <laughs> this was kind of our day in the life. I did cut it a little short because, I mean, seriously, how long can you sit and watch me sit at my computer during the day? <laughs> and now, mind you, we don't have to do that every day without right. the coronavirus. We get to go out and explore and play, which is the whole point of our lifestyle. But, you know, another couple <laughs> weeks hopefully will be golden. Yeah. I will put together my recipe. I've had people ask me for it before. Mm -hmm. So... Pop down below. The blog post will be there for the Mexican martini. Yep. And um, the videos we talked about throughout this video will be there as well. How about this? If you have 
something, a tip that we haven't mentioned Ooh, that you find useful. Yes. Um, how about put that down in the comments? So, you know, again, all of the comments, good, bad, or indifferent, help every reader because everybody's yeah. reading. Like when I was reviewing our, our the lifestyle that we're in now, I would read the comments yeah. because I wanted to learn from more than just one. You at home can help everyone out there who's learning. So, yeah, absolutely. so to all of our experienced people, share your tips. What's the one thing you would tell them? And for the newbies, if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask down in the comments because I'm telling you, people will help you. Our RV community is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, hands down, um, we're loving this lifestyle. Yep. All right. So the link to the newsletter is down below. Don't forget to hit that and join our newsletter. I send out info every Saturday, stuff that just can't make it into the videos. And while you're on the website, did I say website? Okay. Nope. So after you join the newsletter, then head over to our website, todayissomeday.net. Yep. Absolutely. All she covered it all. So. <laughs> One stop shopping right here. All right, be sure and hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and hit that notification bell right over here somewhere. Yeah, that's right. We are going to finish our cocktails and then after that, we will see you on, on the, the road. road. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to start that over. <laughs> yep, it's today. <sighs> Every newbie RB. RB blah, blah, blah. <laughs>